then I'm going to introduce Mark Claver. Mark is one of my buddies. He's one of our auctioneers who's worked with us forever, it seems like, I think. I think so. And hang on, let me turn that off. And Mark's got a couple of sellers who just happen to live like, I don't know, a house apart from each other. And uh, they're both selling tractors. And we wanted to kind of introduce them to you. So that's Mark in the video that you're seeing right now. And hang on. There we go. And he's got his seller with him. And Mark, I'll just let you kind of go from there and tell us about the tractors. Thanks, Ryan. Like I said, I'm Mark Cleaver, Cleaver's Auction Service out in Aurora, Nebraska. And we've got a, I've got Tyson Shimmer here with me right now. Tyson's got a MX230 Case IH tractor that we're going to sell on high bid. You can find it on our website. It's Cleaver Auction, K L I E W E R auction.com. There's links to high bid right there. Guys, we're trying to keep this as much like a, uh, real live farm sale as we can. So I've got Tyson with me. Tyson, let's just talk about your tractor. What can you tell me about it? It's an MX-230. We bought that from Fairbanks International and Hastings oh, a little over 10 years ago. We started with it as our primary big tractor. We ran an eight row, or eight row white planter on it for two years. Then we upgraded to a 12 row, um, Case IH planner on it, and that ran it ran that for two more years, and then we upgraded to another, a little bit bigger tractor than this one. But it it also does uh, it ran a Hinnaker cultivator for the cultivation, and then turn around and we ridged with that same cultivator. We run liquid tanks on it. We got two 300 gallon tanks that are being sold on that same auction that can go on it or I can take the brackets off. The brackets are, the mounts are still on the tractor at this current point in time. Two or three years ago, we were in the middle of cultivating, found a mysterious noise in the engine. So we had it, we took it in, had the engine rebuilt, had basically the lower end just rebuilt was the main thing. Had the turbo replaced and then had the injector pump rebuilt so that way everything was up to date on it it's all still original injector pump it just got went through new seals new gaskets type of deal and then the next year we were having some clutch issues we had the clutch pack rebuilt by the um, case ih dealership here in town titan and since then we've had Virtually no problems with that tractor. It's been a really good tractor over the years. We we put new tires on four years ago. They're probably sitting about 60% right now. All, all six tires were new at once. And uh, it's a good tractor. We just got done row stocking with it and it ran just fine. Did everything great. Just were it's time to uh well dad's update. retiring farming a little bit so they don't need the <clears throat> tractor anymore yeah my dad is backing out of out of farming more and so instead of trying to maintain two big tractors my brother and i are just gonna run with one for now and we still have two other we have smaller tractors that we can use for the other field work when we can't use that tractor um in the fall it runs a grain cart it gets a lot of use. It's a good tractor. It's got right around 6,200 hours on it. Um, the engine rebuild was at 5,000 hours roughly. The transmission was at 5,500, which is the clutch pack that had to be rebuilt. And for the most part, we've never really had a major issue with the tractor. It's just been it's been a good Service. solid tractor for you. Yeah, it's been solid. It's it's a good tractor. We service it every 250 hours. We change the the oil. We change the filters. We change what needs to be changed. We grease it all the time to keep it good. I don't know what else to say. We did there you have go. Oops, GPS. Sorry. 
sorry, we did have GPS on it, but the GPS is no longer with it. It's going on to a different tractor, but it is GPS ready. Cool. So as far as, um, now you're located, you're just outside of Grand Island, correct? Correct. And we're all row crop. Okay. Okay. So kind of the middle of Nebraska then a little bit. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Just to give, just to give the people who are watching, you know, an idea of where you are. All right. Now, Tyson, if, if, if I'm going to be nitpicky or if I'm going to ask you to be nitpicky, is there anything, is there anything about the tractor that you think, or that if you could, you would address, you know, I mean, is the interior, is there any spots in the interior or anything like that? You know, let, like the nitpicky stuff. Well, the interior is not the cleanest. My dad's not, he was, he, spilt his coffee a few times and <laughs> sure it's day. dad's fault sure <laughs> well you know how it is it's mainly yep. dad that drove it but uh you know there's there's a few few spots in it that could be cleaned out the uh electrical on this on this series of tractor has always been for case ih a issue they've had little issues here and there and they're just bugs those are probably the biggest headache to me were the bugs but they were never a major issue for us the biggest one was when we heard the knock in the engine and we shut it down we got the mechanic out there and he said well we need to go through the motor so we did and it was addressed as soon as any time we had a problem we addressed it because a down tractor is a no good tractor fully we agree you know, we can't use it if it's not running. So like the clutch, it was just, it was sluggish. It was kind of acting funny. And so I told dad to stop. I ran it for about 15 minutes, called the mechanic. Can't came out and said that your clutch is going out. So we had to get a new clutch in it, which from what I understand around 5,000 to 8,000 hours, somewhere in there, the clutch pack needs to be rebuilt anyways, according to our mechanic. Now, uh, light-wise, I would love to add more lights to it because our newer one has more lights on the back. And when you're running grain cart, the extra light, you can direct it towards the where the cart is unloading in the evenings. That helps a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But for the most part, for field work, this thing's got a lot. It's got standard lights on it. They're not HIDs. They're not LEDs. They're just the standards. But it does light up the field so you can see what you're doing. Never had a problem with 12-row equipment. You know, we're 12-row wide, by the way, 36-inch row spacing. So, you know, you're reaching out there quite a ways. And the lights do cover it all. And you can see all the way out to the tips of the equipment. Nice. And it pulled, it pulled that equipment just fine with no problem either. Exactly. It, it never had a problem with any of the equipment because it's not, we don't have a lot of major hills or valleys to go up and down in. We're pretty flat land. So it's not like we worked the ever loving piss out of the tractor. We did our best to, you know, make them last. Good deal. Well, hey, let's take a look at it. Let's see what we can do here to take a look at the tractor, I think. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can turn my... Oh. I'm just going to have to turn it around. That'll work. Hey, there she is. There's the tractor. And she does have a full set of weights. Good deal. Let's, let's just start. There's the front end. I'll try and it's kind of hard to do this because I can only see the little box. There's a the front tire. You guys go up the hood. Rear duels. Hey Tyson, you want to get in and fire it up? Sure. Yeah, let's do that while we're right here.
There's the running. I don't know if you want to take a look inside real quick. Then. We'll come around here. Okay. Guys, I'll show you the back side if I can. And it has the hydraulic third link that does come with it. The, the third link comes with that, guys, if you didn't catch that. Nice. There's the back end of the tractor. It does have a PTO. PTO to it. It has a small thousand, big thousand, and the standard 540. And that's in a box in the cab. Yep. Nice. I, think, I think we sent pictures of that too. It has so, um, wheel does it have the rear wheel weights? Here's the other. Is that looking pretty good, Ryan? Are we getting good video of it? Yeah, we're, good. we're doing fine. We're okay. doing fine. And then we're back around to the front of the tractor again. <clears throat> I'll step up inside here. Now they did just use this thing yesterday. Yep. Yesterday they were using it, guys. So it does have a little dirt on the floor. There's the coffee that dad spilled. Yep. On the buddy seat. Ah. Uh, Really wish I could have turned that thing around. Is that looking okay? Yeah, you're you're looking fine. I I know it's being kind of cranky right now. So, and I think the internet will forgive you. And if not, nope. even if they don't, I will. Okay. Got the little sunshade. Everything headliner is good in it, guys. Nice. Like I said, there's a little dirt on the floor, but Tyson did a pretty good job cleaning it out after they used it yesterday. Oops. Isn't that the case with the? Here's the. There's the case with the extra PTOs. Nice. What else do you think, Ryan? I don't know, man. I think. Um, I mean, I kind of described this earlier when I was uh, on camera, or or maybe I wasn't on camera, but I said we could probably hashtag this Workhorse Wednesday because we've got two tractors that, I mean they're built to do a job and and you know they're gonna do it maybe not the parade tractors but they've earned a living they've made a life and they've got the coffee stains to prove it <laughs> and that's <laughs> hey, not nothing it. wrong with that i think that's great okay and with only six thousand miles or six thousand uh, hours on the meter uh they've got plenty more life to live right got a lot of life left in it guys Especially with that new motor. Right. Is there anything else you can think you want to ask Tyson about on his I don't know. I'm looking to see whether or not anybody's got any questions. Um, I put up the link to um, uh, the auctions uh, okay. so that bidders can get to them and, and start, you know, throwing money at you. That's kind of what we want, right? What we want them to do. There you go. And when does, when does the auction end? It comes to a close on uh, Monday, right? 21st. The 21st. I believe that's not this Friday, but next. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time then. You got about a week and a half, just short okay. of a week and a half. Good deal. And and just for the guys out there, Tyson also has that Henniker cultivator that he was talking about and a set of saddle tanks that would fit on this Magnum tractor or MX tractor or similar that'll all be on that auction. So good deal. You guys are looking for that stuff. So, um, all right. Any final words from uh, Tyson? Tyson about it? Actually, I do have one question for Tyson. Okay. Give me a story about this tractor. Something either funny, hysterical, sad, happy. How many kids has this car tractor right. carted around in the we buddy know, seat? We all know about last year's flooding. Yeah. And this tractor had the row stalker hooked up to it. My dad came home. I was out in the cow yard trying to put hay bales out with my MX or my 7230 box car and uh, it got kind of stuck so dad backed this tractor in there hooked on with the chain and I couldn't get that I had duels on my box car and everything couldn't move and uh, he pulled the, that tractor out and I didn't even get in the cab of it yet it was still in park Oops. So it's got plenty of power. Good. But it has not been used for like feeding or any of that stuff in the cow yards. 
we use the older tractors or our other tractors for that. This is a field tractor for us. Good deal. It's a money maker. Yeah. Well, good deal. Let's hope it goes to uh, someone who's going to make money with it. Exactly. And one thing I forgot to say, it does have the extendable mirrors and the extendable flashers over the wheels. Very nice. And they do work. Very nice. There you go. Anything else? Um, you said you put the link up for them so they can get right to the website. Is there anything else we need to know on this one before we move? All about a half a mile down the road to the neighbors and look at his. Now let's go down the road. All right. Tyson, thank you. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Tyson. We appreciate it. I'll holler at you later. Okay, Ryan, we'll get in the pickup and go just down the road here. All right. Sounds good to me. <sighs> We're not texting and driving, so this is safe. That's right. So the clouds must have broken for you. I, last time I saw a picture come out of your cab, you were uh, kind of driving through some rain, I thought. Yeah, it was uh, a little misty, rainy most of the day here today. It's still pretty gray and overcast. So, but we can always use a little moisture. Right, could be worse. <clears throat> yeah, it could be a lot worse. We could be dealing with last year. Yeah, exactly, where the water just wouldn't go away. All right, we're pulling into the Powells here. And he's got this nice 4640 sitting right out in the yard. Now, folks, for those of you who don't know Mark, Mark and his family, they bleed red. They are diehard Farmall IH, Case IH people. I have half a mind to make Mark get into this 4640 and start it and drive it just to just to see the look on his face and see the pain in his eyes. I don't know if I could. <laughs> well, I remember you telling me what your grandmother did. Uh-huh. And I'm wondering what would happen if she saw that now. Oh, she knows I'm just selling it, so she'd be okay. Okay, good. This is Randy Powell. Hey, Randy, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. There we are. There's Randy. I can see you now. <clears throat> All right. Randy's so tell got me this about that 4640. Well, it's a 1980. I don't even remember the hours. What, 90? We're nine, just over 9,000 hours. Okay. 9,000 hours. It's, it's a good tractor. We just rent everything out now. We don't farm anymore. Okay. It's actually my dad's. He is 90 years old. Doesn't hear very well, so he doesn't want to come out and do anything. <laughs> Can't blame him. No, no. Can't Ryan, these them. guys are the second owners of this tractor. Okay. Just, so, just for kind of some information. The on what's that. the history on it? Where did it come from? And we bought it from Green Line Equipment here in Grand Isle. Okay. And uh, we used it for oh, probably a dozen years. Okay. How many hours did it have when you bought it? Do you remember? I don't remember. Probably around, I would say, fifty-eight hundred, somewhere around there. Okay, so you put on what, maybe 3,200, 3,500 tops, something like that? Yep, we used it for planting corn and cultivating. And we had other tractors do the other work. So. Okay, I've got a buddy who, uh, I've got a buddy in central Missouri who farms 2,500 acres and a 4640 is his big horse. Oh, so, yeah? Oh, yeah, <laughs> and he loves it. He wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs> They're a good tractor, a great tractor. I know. I know. We just gave, we actually just gave away a, 
that tractor's little brother about a week ago. A 4440 that went down to uh, Tennessee to start a new life down there. Cool. So, anyway, I'm not trying to brag up on what we did. You tell me about that tractor. How did you guys use it? We we used it, like I said, planting corn and cultivating, and it it was eight row equipment. That's all it ever pulled. Okay. Never did any disking. Never. We always had. You can ask Mark. We had a bigger tractor for that stuff. Okay. Ryan Ryan saw the eighty four thirty. Oh, did you see the eighty four thirty? Yep. That was I your eighty four thirty. With you know the fifty what? twenty fenders on. Oh it. yeah! Now I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I remember this. In the bonnet last week, and he he's in love with it. So <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, you yeah. can't ask for better than that. And I cannot believe, folks. I know that most of you are are kind of scratching your heads right now. What is this goofy man talking about with with this man from Nebraska about this eighty four thirty with it with with fifty twenty fenders? I will find that photo and I will post it in the next day or two, and I will uh, and and I will sh you will see. It's uh, you'd never think that it would work, but it really kind of does. And I thought it was cool as heck. When did you sell that? That was like right around the new year, wasn't it? Or was that before the new year? Yeah, probably February. Yeah, I think it was February. Yeah. Okay. Ryan, this is the this is the real owner of the tractor here, bud. He 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 run this tractor. Hey, bud, how are you? This is Ryan in Des Moines, Iowa. Hi, how are you, bud? Hi. <laughs> Can you guys, Randy, was there any major trouble with this tractor ever? The only thing we had to go wrong was the brakes went out. And the brakes were both replaced. The reason, the, you know, the brakes go out is when it doesn't move anymore because it plugged up the filter. Yep. So the pad chewed off and Greenline replaced all the filter, you know, the brakes on it. So. Since then, it's been great. Awesome. Never had any major engine work or anything. Nope, no major engine work. And like I said, you could pull it all day long and maybe put in a half a quart of oil from time to time. But oil was changed every 100 hours. It wasn't 101 hours. It was 100 hours. So. Awesome. Ryan, when, when we look at this tractor, you'll see when he says they changed it 100 hours, they did because this tractor, I mean, it's as clean as a 40-year-old tractor is going to be. Nice. They, nice. they, these guys, this is, you know, like we said, we sold that 8430. This is the second tractor we've sold for them. And, and man, they are clean and they're in good shape. Um, awesome. Well, you hey, why don't you show me? It? Let's take a look at the tractor. All right. There we go. There's the 4640. Very nice. The light's not the greatest today because it's so overcast out front end guys the story on this tractor a little bit is the rubber i mean the front tires are deep it is clean yeah, that's got to be 90 that's got to be 90 percent or better isn't it i would say so i would say so on the fronts the the rears are not quite as good mm-hmm but includes the duels and comes with the duels. Get the quick hitch, mm -hmm. remotes, everything on the back. How many remotes does it have? Uh, Randy, how many remotes? Three, two, three. I couldn't remember. Three okay. remotes. Three remotes. Okay. Um. Doesn't have any weights or anything with it. I don't think we had any. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed there was no weight bracket on it. Did it come with one, or was it a rock box tractor? Or? It has a weight bracket. It does on have it. a weight bracket on the front. Oh, it does. Okay. Yep. It didn't have any weights on it, and okay. we always use the front mount barrel for putting on fertilizer. Oh, sure. We had side mount barrels plus the front mount, so we never used weight. Got it. Okay. Cool. Do you want to fire it up? I will. Ryan, I still think you need to get in there and do it, Mark. But we'll let Randy. We'll let Randy do it. It's safer <laughs> that way. Uh, 
Well, it seems like she barks good and proper. Folks, I think Mark's audio or I think Mark's audio might be cutting out just a little bit. She runs. She does run. I kind of lost the audio there for a little bit, but uh, that's okay. That's all right. I'll take you in the cab here. Okay. Driver's seat. Good grief, that is clean. Right? No coffee on that one. Nope. Power shift. That'd be what, a 15 speed? Eight. Oh, it's an eight, okay. Eight, eight forward, four reverse. Gotcha, just like our uh, 4440 that we gave away. Yep. There is the front dash. I hope you can see that decent. Yep. yep. Gauges and everything. Clean as a whistle, it looks like. Good headliner. It's got a little bit of loose headliner right up in here in the top. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see oh, a little bit of that's it. The only place it's loose. That's the only place it's loose. 40-year-old, uh, it's 40-year-old foam and fabric. What do you expect, right? Exactly, exactly. It happens. But otherwise, I mean, the floor, the rubber's not all tore up on the floor. Guys, it's a good tractor. Nice. Uh, Hard to ask for more in a workhorse than that. Exactly. Is the AC still work? Does it still blow cold and all that? Andy, does the air conditioner work? It did. I mean, we haven't used the tractor basically for four years. So, okay. I mean, it gets started once in a while when it wants it, and that's where it stays. So. Okay. I'm so right now, going. I'm have to recharge it. You know. Okay, so it's probably going to need a recharge, and I'm maybe sure. just to be on the safe side, bring it into your local deer dealer, have them look her over. It probably wouldn't hurt. Okay. Good deal. Hey, what's the best story on this tractor that you can tell me? Got a good story about it? I really don't <laughs> have a good story. <laughs> I spent a lot of hours in that tractor. I know that. Yeah? But, uh, yeah, everything always worked great on it. Good deal. Good deal. Not shy, on, not shy on power. I forget what those were rated for, but it had to be somewhere close to 180 horse, right? I think it was 180, 185 right in there. Okay. But like I said, it was real equipment. We didn't, it didn't pull that hard, you know, so, mm -hmm. but everything, it, it worked fine on everything. So. Good, because you said you, you said you uh, dragged uh, eight row equipment with it, right? Yep, eight row, 36 inch row. Okay. Okay, cool. So what else should we know about this tractor? Is there anything left? Or is there anything more that we need to know? Not really. I mean, it's a good tractor. Like I said, didn't use any oil, very little, if you know, if any. Yep. It was it was taken care of. Good. Yeah, I can see that. The I can see that. The tractor was faded when we bought it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we that's the way it is now. So. Yep. And it's not as faded as some. I, I we had a 2555 at our farm that we used as a sprayer tractor. I was born and raised in Michigan uh, as an apple grower's kid. We used a 2555 to uh, drag a, about a 500 gallon sprayer, and uh, so that tractor spent a lot of its a, a lot of nights sleeping out under the stars. And boy, I'll tell you what, there wasn't much left of that paint. It seemed like it no, wasn't I'm rust, sure. but boy, she sure faded. It almost looked yellow. Yep. But yep. still ran like a top, just like I'm sure yours does. Will Dad miss that tractor? I'm sure he will. <laughs> or is or was he more partial to the eighty four thirty? What was well, his favorite of the two? You know, I'd say the eighty four thirty was. Can't blame you. Whose idea was it on the fenders? That was Dad's idea when they came out with the eighty. When he bought the eighty four thirty brand new. Yep. They said they had problems with the front duels throwing shucks up underneath the hood and starting fires. Yep. So he went and found a set of fifty twenty fenders. And he revamped them and built them to fit that 8430. 
That's awesome. Folks, I know, I know you guys don't know what I'm talking about. I will find the picture and I will post it so you can see it because you really have to see what he did to these fenders uh, and to this 8430. It, it's it's awesome. He did, he really did a nice job of metal fab on this and, and it looked right and it looked good and it worked, right? It did. It worked very well. We never had a problem. There you go. Awesome. Well, Randy, I appreciate the time. Um, do me a favor, buy dad an ice cream cone as a, uh, as a thank you from me for, uh, hopping into the video and, uh, and, and you know, the whole thing with the 8430. I thought that was cool. Yep. I will do that. Thank you very much. So, and I've got the link up in our, uh, in the comments as to how people can find us or can find that tractor and start throwing money at it. Um, and, uh, I think we said that it ends, uh, late next week. So there's still a little bit of time, but Mark, anything we need to hear from you? I don't think so, Ryan. I just, I want to thank everybody that tuned in and watched us tonight. I want to thank you guys at Tractor Zoom. Um, if there's any uh, auction guys that are watching this thing, if you're not using Tractor Zoom yet, you need to get on. Ryan and Matt have been really good to us, and we appreciate them. I appreciate them doing this this evening. Um, go to the link, follow the link to our website, and throw some money at these tractors. Atta boy. Atta boy. So, and uh, in the event that somebody does have questions, where can they find you? If they have a question that I didn't or that we didn't cover or answer tonight, how can we get it get that answered? There's contact information on both our website on cleaverauction.com and there's contact information on highbid.com. Awesome. They can find us right there. Good deal. And I will tag your socials on uh, Facebook in the post so that people can get to you if they need you that way. Um, I, otherwise, I pretty much uh i've always got my cell phone on me uh if they message through facebook i've got through facebook on my phone we've got cleaver auction on facebook um follow us there like us there that's where a lot of the stuff happens first so a lot of the advertising and stuff happens first there so they can go there and get it and and like i said we uh we've got email and and telephone numbers on the website Perfect. You got any other auctions coming up soon that uh, might be interesting to folks? You want to kind of um, shout out? I know you got some woodworking equipment. I've got some woodworking tools here and we're not even sure on a date yet. That's possibly going to be an online only. Uh, I've got another guy that we're working on lining up some, uh, boy, we've just got miscellaneous everything. He's got lumber. He's got uh, an antique, um, uh, single gang disc he's got a couple of old horse-drawn planters on there there's there's a bunch of that antique farm equipment type stuff um we just took a brief look at it last sunday and and don't even know everything that's there yet that'll be coming up it'll all be like i said it'll all be on facebook it'll all be on the website as soon as we get everything uh going some of this covid 19 kind of shut us down a little bit so we're we're trying to get back after it we we haven't opened up 100% yet here in Nebraska, but we're hoping too soon. So, awesome, we are too. We're uh, we're just about there with uh, opening up in Iowa, and uh, so we're uh, kind of looking forward to uh, getting things back to normal. I know some of the gathering kind of stuff is still up in the air yet, but uh, as I'm sure it is with you guys. But uh, yep. the sooner we can get out and enjoy uh, the company of our fellow man and uh, our fellow auction uh, hounds, the better yep. off we all are. Absolutely. So, all is right, there, buddy. Well, listen, I'll let you get going. Okay. And if there's uh, anything else they need to know, get a hold of us. All right. And hey, and, and uh, for all of the people who are watching right now, if you do happen to send Mark uh, an email, uh, make sure to bag on the, uh, the Huskers. He, he loves that. <laughs> he loves that. Mark's, Mark's a, a great big Husker fan. So, you know, you should kind of let him have it for that. Because that's the, what we do. The, the, you guys being, being Iowa State and Iowa Hawkeye fans, you just, you're just jealous. That's the problem. Yeah, that's what it is, Mark. <laughs> you look at your trophy case and then you, you look at ours and it's like, oh. Uh, is that how this is going to go? <laughs> hey, you started it. I was going to say I know. I know. Hey, buddy, always good to chat. We'll catch up soon, okay? Thank you, Ryan. Thank All you, right. Track and Zoom. We appreciate you guys. You got it. Likewise, Mark. Take care, buddy. You too. See ya.
Thanks again, folks. We will catch up to you uh, a little bit later on. I didn't like that. Didn't I? <laughs>